hours to live, so pay close attention. <laughs> Our brigade, Mississippi Brigade, was in line in Pittsburgh's woods, taking fire from a battery at the Trossel farm. I was impatient. I was a fire eater. I wanted to go in. I went to General McLaws and General McLaws, can I go in? I can take that battery. Patience, wait, wait. I kept riding until they let me go in. My men want to go in. Patience, wait. So I saw General Longstreet approach him. General, may I go in? Well, wait, we're all going in soon. Anya Courier rolled up and he said, Complimentary General McLaw, you may advance. And he said, My face lit up, my eyes were radiant. I rode to the front of my troops and addressed them. Attention, Mississippians! Battalions forward! Dress to the colors and forward to the foe! Onward, brave Mississippians, for glory! And we stepped out, 1,600 Mississippi's bravers, farmers, shopkeepers, clerks, doctors, lawyers, the battle flags snapping in the breeze, young boys who should have been in school beating their drums furiously. A Union colonel was remarking with the grandest charge ever witnessed by mortal man. We swept, swept across the field, approached the Sherfee farm and barn, delivered a volley, then we were on the zoos with our bayonets. We captured and killed and wounded all of them. The Sherfee farm was later burned, and inside we found dozens of wounded soldiers who could not escape. They were identified by their peculiar pantaloons and red caps they wore. Three regiments swung left up the Emmitsburg Road to scour it. The 21st Mississippi straight ahead to the Trossel Farm to take the cannons. We swept across that field, driving everything before us. Streams of Union soldiers were running back towards Cemetery Ridge. Had we been properly reinforced, we could have turned the war. We would be on the Emmitsburg Road, in the rear of the Union Army, the course of the battle, the war and history would have been changed. But on we swept. Suddenly, the 125th New York came out of the woods, brave Colonel Wood at their head. Almost immediately, a Confederate shell tore off the bottom half of his face. He was dead before he hit the ground. And on we swept, and always me at the head, urging my man on. My courier went to General General, we must stop. The lines are broken, we must reform. Reform hell. We got him on the run. Come on, boys, give them the yell and run up their backside. And we swept on and on, furious hand-to-hand -hand fighting. Smoke, flames everywhere, oaths, curses, shouts, men crying, men laughing hysterically. And I kept looking over my shoulders for reserves that were none to be found. We pushed on and on. Suddenly I was hit by a mini ball, went through my left leg and broke my bone. Another ball hit me, but I stayed in the saddle pushing on and on and on. And now the confusion was terribly, the fight was terribly confused. Everything was moving about us. Suddenly a, a shell, a ball from a canister round hit me in the left lung and knocked me from my horse. My aide came to the general, are you hurt bad? I said, I am killed. Keep moving forward. Tell my wife my last words were that I love her. Because of the confused fighting, I was left on the field. That night, two Union soldiers that were looking for me came upon me and recognized the general tenderly carried me back to the Humble's Ball Farm on the Emmitsburg Road. There, a Union servant said, your wounds are long, mortal. Remember the fire, I said, well, I don't care, never mind. Tomorrow, General Longstreet will be here, and there'll be hell to pay. I soon passed away, and I was buried in the rear of the Humble's Ball Farm. Let me skip ahead. In 1866, my wife and my brother traveled from Oxford, Mississippi to take me home. They brought in my favorite hunting dog, Old Jack. I was located, I was taken from the ground, and Old Jack went to my gravesite and he would not leave. He cried, he wailed, he moaned. He would not come, he could not be approached. The burial party had to leave that night, but came back the next morning one more time to bring Old Jack home, but he would not come, and he had to leave. We said for a week that old Jack stayed by that grave, crying, moaning, wailing for him. He could not be approached, he would not take food and water, he would not let him put a rope on him. He too passed away and was buried in my grave. He said today, if you were on the Humble's Ball Farm in the evening on the Emmitsburg Road, you could still hear old Jack crying for him. So my friend, should you be there some night and you hear that dog, please remember me, old Jack. Thank you, Jeff.